Now there is a huge amount going on in the running story about Prince Harry, Meghan, the British royal family, and all sorts of things are being said about it. But I wonder whether running as one thread through this complex rope of a story, our difference is between American and British psychotherapy. It's sometimes remarked that American psychotherapy, care of the self, care of the soul, counselling, is that little bit more behaviourally driven. It's more focused on the individual as someone who needs tending and so as to become developed enough to function as a self in the world and so is called self-psychology. Whereas British European psychotherapy is more interested in linking that to culture, to the different influences upon an individual and working out how the individual, rather than being seen as a self in their own right, is seen as a person functioning within a broader society. The culture of their family, of course, but also their wider setting. And this has had an influence in terms of the way that psychotherapy is both theorised and practised. So, for example, American self-psychology, given one can even say that, will tend more to function on the flourishing of the individual for its own sake and using qualities such as empathy to foster that. As it were, supporting the individual's narcissism through empathic sympathy in order that the individual can feel that they can flourish. Now, I should just say that in psychotherapy, narcissism isn't automatically a bad thing. It's the recognition that there is a need to be at ease with oneself, to love oneself, to be comfortable enough in one's own skin in order to flourish in the world. And so the self-psychology of the US will argue that the empathy in a therapeutic relationship or conversely in terms of listening to the individual telling their story in the broader culture. So I think it's no coincidence that the chat show opera has succeeded and indeed become come out of an American context because of the use of empathy in fostering an environment in which an individual feels they can tell, can confess their story as they see it. That empathy is thought to provide the right environment that maybe was limited or constrained when the individual was young. The empathy of the parent for one reason or another wasn't adequate or perhaps was taken away dramatically, traumatically. And so empathy is a key part of the therapeutic approach, both in one-on-one -on -one psychotherapy, but also more broadly in the therapeutic culture of the US. Another slightly more technical term from this self-psychology feels relevant when thinking about Harry and these tensions, this cultural difference that seems to be drawing him out like on a rack. And that's the notion of a self-object. In self-psychology, one of the ideas too, alongside empathy and others, is that the individual needs to be able to identify with someone, an object, as psychotherapy puts that, who is an idealised version of themselves, so that they can, through that idealisation, find a way into being more themselves. And again, in a therapeutic relationship, the therapist therefore might be much more on the side of the client, less inclined to challenge them, more inclined to allow 
in the transference in the way that the client feels about the therapist allow themselves to be seen as good as wanting the best as even an idealized version of the client themselves in order that the client can explore themselves and so in time take that into themselves and develop as a self and i think culturally this plays out in the way that there are idealized figures in broadly speaking american culture the person that we want to be um, the heroes of the culture um, that sense that in say a interview based on empathy and drawing very broadly on psychological insight the interviewee will feel less confronted and more that they are in the company of other selves who are fully developed and so that brings out the development of their selves therapeutically as well as more in the cultural space so that feels like the culture perhaps that Harry's gone into and has found it potentially healing, has found it appealing, attractive. But of course, he is born into another culture and so takes that within in himself. And this would be the British European approach. Rather than self psychology, it can be summed up by what's called object relations. So this is the idea that in life, particularly in early life, but throughout life, we absorb different personalities, subpersonalities, experiences that have sometimes powerful emotional tones and that these people, fragments of people, encounters live inside us like a kind of microcosm and we're inclined to experience the outside world first of all through our inner life when we meet someone we don't meet them as an individual but first of all meet them through our perception of them which means that we turn inward and find unconsciously of course but as it were find one of these objects inside us that's a bit like the person standing before us and then relate to the person standing before us primarily through this inner representation and of course in time the person standing before us becomes more clear to us and so the inner representation having served its function can be let go of but what this means in terms of therapy is that an object relations approach rather than focusing on the self and their steady development in an empathic environment the therapy will try to understand the inner world of these sometimes loving sometimes hating sometimes sympathetic sometimes aggressive objects and in the therapy attempt to reveal to the client these tensions these conflicts that are absorbing a lot of their energy and so potentially bringing them down causing problems certainly damaging their narcissism meant in the sense of being at ease comfortable with yourself because the primary experience of the self is through the way that these inner objects do and don't live alongside each other function well or not now what this means too is that rather than a empathic environment dominating the empathic environment is still there but rather than it dominating the therapist will challenge the client point out to them where these conflicts might exist ask about their aggression ask about the negative transference how the therapist is not an idealized person but is someone that the client might have all sorts of feelings about both wanting and not wanting both liking and not liking and that in pointing out these negative facets as well as the idealized facets the individual gets to know themselves in relation to a wider whole 
this inner microcosm being a reflection of the world around that they must become accustomed to, feel that they can function within, accommodate within themselves. So whilst this is putting it a little simplistically, I think one of the things that you can see playing out in this furor, in this psychodrama, in this revelation, in this heartfelt story of Harry, is the tension between, on the one hand, an American environment of self-psychology, where confession and narrative and building up the self is seen as the way of tackling childhood, particularly trauma. And the British approach, the more European approach, which wants to point out the difficulties, the tensions, the conflicts, to challenge the individual more. I even wonder whether you see this at the level of the media, if it's the case that the American media is more sympathetic to Harry, wants to hear his story as if that itself is the main aim, whereas British European media is more inclined to challenge Harry, which of course can very quickly turn into an attack on him. But perhaps that aggressive move is not unconnected to the traditions in British and European psychotherapy, which are more inclined to challenge the individual. In the case of psychotherapy, of course, to challenge them in order that they can understand their own inattentions and develop the capacity in the first instance to live with what's happened, to live with how that lives on inside them, but then more generally to reach an accommodation with the world that allows the individual and the culture, the broader environment, the society, the family, to live in a mutual place of better flourishing. The isolated individual of self-psychology, you could put it sort of too simplistically, as opposed to the individual who understands their connections with the world around them and has found a way of living within that network, though it's going to be a mixture of support and love, as well as difficulty and challenge. So that's to suggest something about Harry and the different traditions of psychotherapy. I've simplified it to make the point, but I think there's something of the difference between what happens on one side of the Atlantic and another that is both psychotherapeutic and culture amplified in the media, of course, not least in the way that it takes psychological ideas, psychotherapeutic ideas and popularizes them, in part simplifying them, but telling us something perhaps about the cultural differences that Harry has launched himself into, no doubt in hope of finding his voice, finding healing, but in adopting that perhaps more American model is now right in the conflict zone between that American model and more British European traditions that say, no, it's not just about the self-flourishing, but the self-flourishing within a wider environment that sometimes is supportive, but sometimes is more difficult.